this is going to be the second part from the from the first um, issues that I was having from the from the schools and from the CPS and doctors and all that type of things. Subscribe to my channel, leave some comments, and if you can share my videos, you know and. If somebody have a, a, that type of experience or they have any other information that I don't even know, just leave them in the box so that way I can still read it, so that way I can see how I can handle it with all the situation I'm still going through with all this. So from the from the issues that I was starting having with the, with the school, the madrasa was starting being sick, and... Uh, all the issues that, the, that this teacher that was starting being uh, doing to my baby and, uh, and abusing us too much. So when I see my daughter on Friday, that she started not feeling well, she started vomiting. It was five days that she started vomiting, not even stop. At that moment, I was right away. The, day that, the, the same day I was seeing my daughter, she was starting vomiting and all that type of thing. I said, what the hell is going on? So what are they doing to my daughter? <laughs> So I went to the to the to the clinic to open door to check and her up. They was only checking her out to see if she had any temperature or anything. She wasn't having no temperature. She was having normal things, but there was no even know what exactly was going on. Why she was vomiting all the time. But I was not that that she was vomiting because she was having no food at all in her stomach for five days when she was at the school and she was eat very well in my home, drinking a lot of water and and eating very well. I don't, I don't even have no lunch. She was take breakfast before she go to the school. But uh, you know, at the lunch times, is uh, is many hours, and they hydrating her because in the school bus they doesn't have no AC, like I said. So I was thinking to to take my daughter every single day to pick her up and drop her up from the school and they all the time they still deny me saying no no she had to be go to the bus and blah blah, blah. I said no you know I, I had to still bring in my daughter because there's still something that is not going well in there so Nicole coach she's uh, the psychology person in there she's the nasty person I want to be show you one day the her picture and the videos many people they want to be saying oh no but she's okay she's not doing nothing wrong with the kids many people they interpret them whatever they want whatever you see in it is many normal for many other people but this is one of the issues that still coming when you don't pay an attention to your kids who's making the, the our kids make them feel very badly okay so when i bring my daughter to the hospital i mean not to the hospital to the doctor to check her out to, to find out what's going on with my daughter why she's vomiting every single time three times a day and not stop losing weight and everything there was no even do not too much for for finding what's going on okay the first thing that was being the doctor telling me an open door her name is bella pace she told me before to do anything no even any tests no even blood work no even finding what's exactly what's going on and she told me verbally your daughter she have a leukemia She killed me when she told me that without doing any single test. How can you want to be predicted something horrible without any to do any single test to find out why my daughter she's vomiting? Why do you have to be still coming telling me that my daughter she have a leukemia when you didn't do nothing, not even blood work to find out it was exactly what's going on? Why you still open your dirty mouth for telling me that my daughter she have a leukemia just like that? I was starting to spoke to that woman very badly. But I'm very glad that I was starting recording it, everything that she was telling me. She was killing me, telling me that type of things, a, a wrong information, okay? That is starting to come the big issue, and this is when I'm starting being, for myself, being stronger, and starting having evidence for how they was starting telling me a lot of things that I was not even agree. So when she told me that, and I told her, you know what, you don't even do nothing, not even blood work, not even any test for having or oh, see what's exactly what's going on in my daughter's body. And you're telling me the mother she have a leukemia? Really? And she was starting putting her hands in here and I said, I know exactly what's going on over here. You're just telling me that just for hurting myself, for hurting my feelings and everything. Then the one that was doing maybe one test, it was coming nothing, negative. They said, oh, I'm sorry. And I told her, 
you told me the Maduro you have this. I want to know what's going on. Because you have no rights for still telling me, for doing anything, telling me the Maduro you have leukemia, and you want to be telling me just boom, like that. I said, I'm so sorry, say, but are the symptoms is the same thing. I said, no, there's not the same thing. Okay, because I have no idea what is exactly the same thing with all this. Everybody have a different type of things or, or anything like that. I was very angry. Like right now, I'm very angry. And she told me after all that, and I was starting recording it and everything. So without her, without without she not anything. Because if I told her I'm recording on her, she will be more in problems. And she's right now in big problems. Okay. And then after that, she was telling me, she said, I'm sorry. I said, I was made a mistake. She's telling you that. She said, I'm, I'm not supposed to be saying that. But you told me that. And you hurt me very badly. You're making me feel so horrible. You killed my feelings very badly and telling me something that without doing any stupid things for having no exactly what's going on. They sent me with my daughter to the hospital, the same hospital, the Maria Ferreira Children's Hospital in Valhalla. They was mistreating us very badly without because they are not going to give it me to me on that time either. The health insurance, not even when my daughter she was born, not even when my daughter she was starting the school. So it passing maybe six years without health insurance. I have all these type of issues. This is the type of situation they have to be still being people still have to be still seeing all these type of things because now this virus is still uh, killing too many people because they're putting a, a trigger in, in our heads saying that you have this, you have this, and you have this. Really? Many people, they want to say, oh, but I, I'm wrong. Yes, maybe I'm wrong. But I, I am right for my things because I can see that more than anybody else. They're not seeing it. How many people have still been abusing us since we started coming to this world to be alive? They've still been abusing us, okay? Abusing us for many things. So in Children's, in Maria Ferreira Children's Hospital, me and my daughter, we was spending one week, one full week. I wasn't even having no money. I was not even bringing no clothes for me, not even for my baby. But no money for buying food for me. Okay? Because they want to be do, it's supposed to be a test to see what is exactly what's going on with my daughter, why she was having this vomiting, okay? But the more important, the more the more funny things and the more humanity that I was finding in there, that was one of the was me and my daughter, we was spending the full week in the hospital. I was having no even, I think I was having only, probably at the time, I was having only $10 for paying the taxi to go back. I was praying, I was doing a lot of things. I was crying, I was taking pictures, videos, and all that type of things to find out what exactly was going on with my daughter. And I'm glad that my daughter, she having no leukemia because that freaking woman, Dr. Bella Pace, from Open Door, she was telling me a wrong verbally information. So we spend over there, like I said, one week. I'm sleeping over there with my daughter. I see my daughter, she was crying at night, calling me, saying, mommy, mommy, don't let this teacher still start hurting me. And I said, I know that there was been abusing my daughter. Many times they abusing my daughter in the school, making her feel sick, making her feel trauma. Physical abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, school neglect, and many other type of things. How I was handled in the hospital with no food at all, with no money? I don't know. I was losing a lot of weight. I had to be washed the clothes that I was wearing for the next day. The room, it was cold. I was paying attention to my daughter, what's going on, what I wanna do, what I wanna do to her. But nobody was offering me any single food. 
They only they was giving food to my daughter because we was having no health insurance. So I was taking only just a little pieces of the food that was my daughter that was giving to her because they was starting checking if my daughter she's eating or not. Just for surviving. I was taking only a little bit of food over there. And the nurse one day she was catching me and she told me, So I said, You are eating the food. I said, But I'm hungry. So you're not supposed to be eat anything. You have to be still checking all the food, how much food that your daughter she's eating. And I say, oh, this is the way it is now. If I didn't say nothing to her, I should say it inside of me. I say, oh, this is the way it is. So you want to be letting me to die? You make my daughter, she's uh, being over here and saying they're still abusing us because we don't have enough health insurance, right? And you're still talking to me in the very wrong way. Then I think so on the third day, there was the teacher. It was the one that was making my daughter feel sick. And the social worker that was arriving in the, in the school, I mean, the, and up, up to the hospital. They was, um, I think so I was called them. I was called them to the teachers and I said, my daughter, she's not going to go to the school because she's in the hospital with me right now. I said, oh, we didn't know that your daughter, she's in the school. I said, well, this is why you make my daughter to feel very badly, to seek my daughter for that way. You can still make my daughter to feel that, that way, in the wrong way. Because now you start accusing my daughter and accusing me, saying that my, that my daughter, she has something that is not appropriate. So there was being hypocrite. There was bringing some, a little gift for my daughter. And the social worker, she told me, said, well, this is Mrs. Toro, they said, do you need some money? I said, I do need money, but I, I don't know how I'm going to go get it. He said, don't worry, so I will give you, he said, $20. I said, I don't need your money. I want my daughter to get getting better, and I want to know what's going on. So no, he said, keep this money said, because you're going to need it. I accept it because I really I do need to get some food for me. I'm dying over there. And my daughter, she needs me and my son too. My son, he was being home alone. The neighbor, she was being taken out my son for a full week. But it doesn't matter. That's not the same thing. And know. Uh, Then one of my son, he went to the to the hospital to, to see us. And I told him, don't worry for anything, sweetheart. Mommy and your, and your sister, we want to go home. And I want to find out what's going on with your sister. But he was very sad, too. So there was not even funding nothing from the stupid woman the, 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 from the open door. The doc, Dr. Bella Pace told me the mother she had a leukemia. There was not even funding nothing at all. They was hiding many things because I know exactly what they was been doing to my daughter. There was a verbally and physical abuse that was being doing to my daughter for traumatizing my daughter, for making her feel badly so that way they can still say in the mother she's an autistic. Really? Since when autistic and the trauma and verbal abuse is going to be calling autistic? Like right now they're calling everything virus, coronavirus. Everything is virus right now, right? Right now, the coronavirus is the more famous. Right now, I don't know how many Oscars they're going to be still winning for all this situation, right? Because right now, there is no school. And whatever the places they have in my daughter, that's the very bad place. They have all the children over there suffering, physically abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, and medical neglect and school neglect. There is no school over there. They're still being doing nothing, not even helping the children. I can tell you if somebody have a sign language and they can't go over there, to check on the kids, to see if they can talk and using a science language or they're talking to them, they cannot even do that. Okay? And they place my daughter over there, these freaking people from CPS, because I'm not gonna still go back and forth, you know. So when we was my daughter and me and we was in the hospital, they don't even find nothing, nothing at all. And I was so worried for all this, and I was wet skinny myself because I was not even able to eat nothing. And mother, she was being scary because they was mistreating her in the school, not even giving her my daughter to her food for making her feel like that way, you know? So that is the big issue that I was starting finding, not just only that. Then we went out from the, from the hospital, we went to the house. My daughter, she was starting again feeling very scary and uh, to go back to the school. And I said, don't worry, sweetheart. Mommy's going to be fixed all this. So then the passing the time again, 
and I was started having again more, more problems and the issues with the with the school teachers and the and this woman, the uh, Nicole Coach, and all that type of things. Nicole Coach, she says she's a psychology, but she's having more mental problems than anybody else. There was continued abuse in my daughter. When my daughter she was passing to the fourth grade, that was starting another big another big trauma there. So um, when my mother she started going to the school and the other in the other in the other school from the first grade to attending the school and there I was started hearing a very bad things and very bad news from the other school and um and there was my neighbor there was she started telling me that, uh, that the schools over there there was being um a lot of issues the teachers are still abusing the kids a lot of things in there. And I say, I hope not to happen anything with me because I have enough from the other school, the park school. It was been doing a lot of things to my daughter. And it was not even doing too much. Preventive services. Miss Gabriela Mendoza, she's not even doing nothing for helping me. They don't even find out what's going on. I was asking if they can they can supervise in over there at the school to see if they're giving to my daughter appropriate for food. They was not even doing nothing. They was ignoring me. All right? So I want to be jumping to the other side because this is there's many many issues from one side to the other one. So when my daughter she started going to the school from the first grade and in the other school to Roosevelt, no Roosevelt, no that's the, that's the other one. Uh, what is the name of the other school? I don't remember what's the name of the school. Brookside, Brookside School. I have it here, Brookside School in Austin. I was not even all is gonna be coming again the other issues. And the same stupid teacher that was been doing all this abuse to my daughter is gonna be coming from the first grade too. So I don't know in all the systems, all the schools, all in the areas, and including over here and all the and all the towns and all the whole world, they are the same shit. Okay? I know there's a four word bad word that I was say it. Okay. So I was starting seeing again the same situation. The mother, she's coming crying from the school, it's scary from the school, crying for I don't know what is the reason I was been doing this to my daughter. What was the problem for that? I was not even though that the teachers they have a lot of issues, a lot of more mental problems than anybody else. Accusing my daughter or accusing other children, abusing them, not even giving a good education, not even respect, not even from the autistic kids or severe autistic kids or the regular kids. Okay? I was many, many times complaining for my, for, the, for all these teachers that are, are not even teaching my daughter nothing very well. And the teacher, her name is Lisa Fischerl, she called me, not only one, many times. And she called me one time very angry and she told me in the very wrong way. I don't remember if I was recording that time, I don't think I was having that, that, that record, the phone call recorded. But as she told me very badly, and she told me, she said, if you don't tell your daughter to not bring no toys at the school, I want to take her, your daughter away from you, they say, very badly. So what toys are you talking about? She's just only bringing one. He said, don't matter. You want to be, uh, uh, if you don't put your daughter away from all this, he said, I want to be make your daughter to take, to take your daughter away from you. So she was starting making me feel very badly. I said, oh, this is the way it is. And this is why you still returning me my daughter very, in the very wrong way, angry, badly, making her feel badly, abusing her many times. So it was this, um, it was in October, I think so in October, it was uh, a, um, a trip. One of the parks, they are in, in, the, in another town. It was Mumber, no. Beer month, I think. I was not able to go because I wasn't having no car, no transportation. But one of the parents, not only one, many parents, they was being so, the teachers that was carrying to my daughter, holding her for her both arms, scratching her, my daughter's feet onto the ground for making my daughter's uh, damage on my daughter's feet. What type of teachers is that? If they're telling me there was a many, many guys from the military that was being so in that. And there was no even say anything to. When I saw my daughter, she had many times problems walking. I said, "What's going on?" She got the teachers that was carrying me in the wrong way. They said they was scratching me on the floor. They said they was being abusing me. So I was finding on my daughter's arms over here, in both arms, 
a fingerprints over there. And I was so angry with us. And the parents that was telling me, he said, Mrs. Del Toro, they said, you are the mother of Little Katie. He said, yes. I said, what's going on? They said, oh, they said, in the trip that was being the beer mom, there was being the two teachers. I saw that. They said, they was being carrying your daughter. He said, scratching her on the floor, making her feel very bad. They said, they was not even giving no chance for her, still walking by her own. So, but they was being abusing your daughter. They said, oh, my God. This is when I was standing. I said, what the hell? For not having my car on that time for going to, to the trip. For being checking my daughter on the moment so that was not only the time it was many times it was being physically abusing my daughter and i was and i was worried for that so then one time again my daughter she was coming from the school crying and i saw the bus monitor again but it's been a physical abuse my daughter and, I, and she was pulling her out of the chair very badly forcing her to get out from the chair and then I was so hard, there was another that bus monitor, she was pushing the head from another kid on the smashing on the on the in the wall from the from the from the bus monitor, from the bus. And I said, you know what, you have no rights for still being doing all this. What what are you still doing all this to my daughter and to the other children? So you have no respect at all. So when I see my daughter and I was being tired and shaking her when we were starting doing some we wanna be wanna be doing some uh cookies from for her friends from the school. My daughter at that time, she was wearing a long sleeve, so that way I was, I was not even see the, the marks that she was having, but I was see one on her cheek, the scratching on her cheek, and she was very upset. She was not even telling me nothing, and I said, what the hell is going on? So when we was doing the cookies, and we was cooking everything, and we was finished, and we was take, going to one, I go take a shower. That's when I was found that the mother, she was having bruises on both arms. And I was asking, what's going on, sweetheart? Who do this to you? This is the picture. This is my daughter's arm. The bruises in there. All over here, there was a slap in her in both arms. And uh, I was not even happy at all. I don't know if they can see it over here. That's the... Uh, the uh, the fingers from the nails that was being grabbing her over here, that was making all this to my daughter. More bruises that was starting being from the from the time that was being abusing her. We was in the hospital, me and her, for checking her out. And she was very calm. After there was being the nurse, it was coming again to the to the room and was trying to, to check in her that she was very scary, not letting her to stay checking anything at all. Of course, how she's gonna be still feeling not scary because this bruise that this freaking woman, Fischero, she was be doing this to my baby. How she's gonna be feel my, 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 myself to see my baby with all these bruises on her arms? Horrible. Not happy, of course. Okay. This is how they was being still mistreating my daughter in the high school. Slapping her. Abusing her, letting all these bruises onto my daughter's body. Scratching her on her cheek for abusing her or slapping her. Making her feel very badly. This is when I was seeing her because we was in the bathroom. We wanna go take a shower. Then I was bringing my daughter to the hospital to check in her up. You know? Angry, sad. And seeing all these scratches, fingerprints from the nails on the on, the, on my daughter's body, on her arm. Very clear, they can see over here the nails. These two, these three or four nails, they was over here, they're trying to grab in her like, you know, like this way, scratching her. I don't have any big nails because I have a, I was not even doing that. How do I feel with all this situation? I feel so badly and horrible. And that is nothing again. This is in one place. And the other one, it was starting again, the other, the other issues now that, that right now they have in my daughter. And here, in this, uh, and this is in this um in this place again, you know. How come they wanna be still abusing me and telling me that I was being abusing my daughter 
when they was being again physically abused my daughter. These people, look at the bruise that was there, nurse that was being doing to my daughter. Many bruises. This is for now, this is from the last year after they was removing my daughter away from me. Over here, they cannot see it, but this is my daughter's head. But my daughter, she told me there was a nurse from the Franklin Manor. She was hurting my daughter on her head with the door, and that door is metal. But doesn't matter, metal or wood, no matter. They was being hurting my daughter over here. That's where I was taking the picture, okay? And there was being a physical abusing her day by day until I was starting to submit complaints, one and another, one and another, okay? This is from Franklin Manor. Many pictures I have here from Franklin Manor. From the other place, after they was being removing her from me, from the other, the other, the other, from the, from that time, we was over here too in the in the hospital, right here. This is my baby, waiting, hmm? for checking her up and all that type of things. The other issue that I was being starting seeing it is when they was being abusing her when she was in JCCA. There was more bruises over here. I, I don't think so they want to be here, but there was bruises over here. When it scratched very fresh, I was, I was cleaning all the blood. But she was having more bruises all her, all her legs. And I was asking many times why they was giving to my daughter wearing a pull-ups. And they say, no, the day she doesn't even wear it. What is all this? She wearing a pull-ups. Right here, very clear. Pull-ups. Okay? My daughter's her legs, completely very dry skin, bruises. And this is why my daughter, she's having all the time itching in there. And I was taking this bit, these pictures when I was going to pick it up my daughter from the JCCA. And there was being physically abusive because I cannot see very well, but she's having out over here a very bad bruise on her back. And there was and the JCCA nurse checking her up before to taking her out of there to report all this. Okay? So if they think... They want to still continue over and over, still mistreating us and abusing us, and still mistreating us all the single time, and still continue over and over because this woman over here, that's the CPS, that's another CPS woman. That's a, this one is a black woman. This woman is uh, her name is Rosa Credo. She's Latin woman. I don't know from where where exactly her uh, um, place it is. I don't know if it's from Mexico, Guatemala, or Puerto Rico. I have no idea, but she's she's a Spanish woman. This woman is a black woman. You cannot see her face, but she's a black woman. And over here, that's the police officer that was at my door. And the other guy was next to her on the other side. Okay? And this is when I went to pick up my daughter these last two years to the school over here in Beacon. Okay? And this is what it was CPS. This woman over here, I don't know if they can see it, but this woman, she's from CPS from this town. She called the police. Okay? She called the police in the school. They're calling the police, telling them to physically abusing me. Okay? But before that, this woman, Rosa Clito, from the CPS, she was in my home over here for trying to kidnap my daughter, hurting, hurting me, and sending me again to the hospital for making me this type of bruise on my arm. Okay? They was being put in my arm because they want to be checking out if, if I have it. They want to be doing an x-ray for my daughter. It is a bruise over here, a big giant ball they was going to be doing to me when I was trying to kidnap my daughter because the police, it was here, the one that I will show you, for trying to kidnap my daughter, for defending my daughter, for many bruises and abuse that was being doing to my daughter. And, and, and Austin, we was moved from Austin to here. And again, the same thing. Why they still been doing all this to us? No idea. And this is one that they was been doing this to me when I went to pick it up my daughter. Yes, the police, they was grabbing me, smashing me, my head onto the wall, into the wall, into the car. Okay? Into the floor. Smashing me, my legs. I was not able to walk very well. Both legs, because not just only one, it's both legs. Okay? Both of them. They are being in injuries. I was not able to walk, not able to talk. I was starting having a lot of problems and again there was being hurting me my arm the same arm there was this woman she was hurting me the same arm there was being hurting me okay the same one look at that so i was being 
physically abused by the CPS in my home and by the police and the school teachers. Hmm? Look at nice, nice bruise, nice tattoo that was left me, this woman in my arm. Hmm? How can I not want to be fighting for having my daughter back? Look at the big bruise that was starting crying over there. And this is the big issue that I'm starting complaining to having my daughter back. Right now, my daughter, she was, she was passing a, on a big uh, problem on her body. I have a lot of big pictures with me, but I will show it. Frankly, Mara, they was been mistreating my daughter since she was starting having her. And they was placing her before in Cardinal Mokowski in Ossining, when we still living in this town. Okay? What have they was been doing to her over there? A lot of things too. Physically abusing her, giving to wear two pull-ups to my daughter when she was not needing no pull-ups. Now she can go to by herself independently to go to the bathroom. But how she's going to be go to independently to the bathroom when they're still being abusing her, verbally abused, is a lot of issue. It's a lot of trauma. It's a lot of problems in there. They're pulling her out of the school because they say, Madura, she doesn't even do nothing good in the school. Really? Let me see if I can bring this on. I have all these papers with me when she was with me over here. And this is what she was started learning over here, you know, all these papers, all these bunch of papers is over here. Because they taken her out of the school because she have all this, really, because she have a good uh, score, having the stars, having 80%. That is why they taken her out of the school, because I was not even helping her very well to having all this type of, of good, um, a good learning because she was learning good and having all the stars. And having everything well. Hmm? So she have a start because that's why they taken her out of, out, of, out of way from me. Because all these papers that I do have here with me, all this is very badly. So you can, can show you every single paper. All of them. They have a, all this uh, a good score. All of them. Because I was helping her to have all this type of, of, um, of scores and everything. Okay? It's many of this. This is from two schools, one from Ossining, one from Beacon, okay? But none of them is showing me nothing that was been doing all this to my daughter over there, okay? None of them. You can see stars. She doing well. She doing well. High scores. Writing. More clear. No issues at all. And this is what I was helping her to do here in the house. Returning this to the house, to the school and all that type of things. This is what the shoes want to be still learning. And what do they give it to me? Only physical abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, mistreating us, breaking our law, civilian rights, human rights, kids' rights from the school, kids' rights from the from everywhere. Giving medication because this is this is what she was learning over here, because this is this is what this is what she do with me over here. This is what I was helping supporting my daughter for that way she can still be having all this nice uh, scoring here. Okay? And now if I can show you from the from the supposed to be the school that she's going over here, they don't even give me no even one paper for showing me nothing like this. Okay? Not even one paper because I'm still keeping asking for having my daughter another paper, for having my daughter back. The papers is recycling. Okay? I don't care about the papers. I care about my daughter right now. And I'm very worried and I'm very concerned from Franklin Manor still being abusing my daughter. Sounds from the mother she was starting the school from the kindergarten. Then to the, first, the second grade, I mean the first grade, and then they was placing my daughter, taking her away from me because I was defending my daughter for all the bruises that this woman from the teacher, from the school that was being physically abusing my daughter, okay? Then there was being a continue harassing my daughter, abusing her, and telling me a lot of things. The, uh, the one of the principals and the social workers from the, from the, from the school from, um, from Brookside, they was preparing another, uh, preparing another another attack for me. What they was been doing it? I have to be find the video. They cannot see in it, but they can hear it very exactly very well. They was been doing this to us. The social worker and the principal from Brookside School, they was uh, taking one of the toy gun, the water gun, you know, the little ones, I don't know if you know, maybe they know. They was taking that toy uh, from the other kids. They was living in the, in the, in the, in the, in the office from the secretary. What was the plan? The plan is, there was from these two women, they was planning to, this, to, uh, to um, 
to say something very stupid, very horrible. And they was not even know that I was being, you know, recording everything. All right. So when I was submitted the complaint, one of the was these teachers that was being hurting my, hurting my daughter, and I told the principal there was the teacher that was been doing all this, and I was confront all of them, and my daughter she told me in front of, to all of them, and I said, Katie, tell me who was the person that was being physically abusing her. My daughter she was completely scared, and the woman, the Fisher, the Lisa Fisher, she was she was like this, looking to my daughter very deeply, you know, like they usually they was been doing all this to scare them. But this woman, she was very scary. She was very in front of me, crossing her arms and looking at my daughter very badly for making her feel very badly. And I said, Katie, don't worry, sweetheart. Tell me who was the person that was been doing all this to you. And she pointed at me and she told me, Doc, uh, Lisa Fisher, that was doing this to me. And then the woman, she was starting, I, I was not even doing nothing. He said, for a hundred years that we have in this school, he said, I never touched any kid. Really? Don't freaking bother me like that way to my baby because you was doing this to my daughter and you was calling me before and you telling me because my daughter, she was bringing one toy to the school and you was removing the, 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 the toy and, then I, and I told my daughter to put it on the back, back. And you was telling me to go to the school to pick all the toys that was my daughter, she was bringing to, to the school. And I said, what many toys that was bringing my daughter to the school because she was not even bringing too many, okay? All the kids, they're bringing toys at school. What the hell is wrong with us, okay? And that was no reason for you to hurt my daughter. How that's what I was saying, okay? So I was confronting her. And all of them, they was being supporting each other, including the guy, okay? So the principal, she take the report, but she complained and she said, well, your daughter, she, they told him, they told it, the, the, your daughter, she told the teacher that she was hurting her with the, with the scooter. <laughs> the scooter. Really? I have that video in Facebook when the mother, she was playing with the school, it's a tablet with the four wheels on the bottom. And the thing is a tablet that you can put some stuff in there that you can move it by any size, you know, and all the kids that was been using it for playing. So the teachers that was be telling me, the mother that was being punished my daughter, putting her for 45 minutes on her chest, using that the scooter on there. What type of things that I'm, oh, I wanna be so stupid. If my daughter, she have a bruise or pain in her chest, I will notice. My daughter, she will be telling me, 45 minutes is a big punishment. If, it, if it that woman, she was doing it to my daughter, she is going to get a big problem. So what did I was do? Yes, I did. I went to the, to the hospital. Yes, I went to the, to the police station. Yes, I did. I submitted a complaint. But in the hospital, they was not even helping me at all. The hospital doctor, they was calling the CPS, and the CPS say to the hospital, we cannot help you because that is nothing to do with this. Really? So the CPS only that's removing the children's one of the parents, they not do nothing. And the teachers, they have a more, what? More support? This is how the system is working? Corruption everywhere? Hmm. And right now, I'm going to be moving more forward because that is more forward, more things in there, in the middle. So when are they taking my daughter away from me? And there was, no, the, before than that. There was this, the one that was with me, the complaint. And I was talk, talking to the to the principal and the social worker and the principal that was planning with the toy gun that I was being saying it. The, uh, I was being all right with my daughter. My daughter, she was completely scared. But I was preparing my, you know, to record it, every single thing. So when we was arriving there, the teacher told me, he said, can I take the kid, can you take your daughter to the class and then I will bring her back? I said, no because I know exactly what you wanna do. I remember one of them was been doing this to my son and I say, you're not gonna do that with my daughter right now. Mm -mm. I said, no. So she was getting angry, the Fichero, okay? Lisa Fichero, she was getting angry. She was gonna try to take my daughter to the class, telling her there was a mistake. And say, my daughter, she had to be telling me, the mommy, she's gonna be, she, it was a mistake. I was hurting my, myself, no way. That is gonna be a rubbish, it's gonna be going away. So because I didn't let this woman to take my daughter to the class and bring her back for telling me everything on reverse, I was being noticed that something is not going well. I was starting recording everything from the beginning through now to find it exactly how, how the freaking system is still working in this, in this having very bad discipline of these teachers. And I'm gonna be, have to be still finding how I wanna be still submit all this to find it out and to get my daughter right now back to me and get justice, okay? So let me finish with um, 
with the with the thing that this woman, the principal and the social worker, with the toy gun that was been doing to my to my to myself and to my daughter. Until the social worker, she was starting talking to my daughter, and I was starting talking to the principal, trying to resolve all this situation in the good way, in the good terms. The social worker, she was starting giving to my daughter a directions to grab the toy, the toy gun, the to the water boy toy, and to pointing on me on my face to telling me splash splash. Really? Since when the school teachers or principals had to be using a toy gun, okay, or the water toy gun, whatever you want to call it, for still being abused, are using it for still pointing to the parent and saying all these type of stupid things. What type of school teachers or principals they still taking the toy gun from one of the kids, put it in the office, in the desk, waiting for me and my daughter for planning all this to us. And then whether they was been doing it, this is gonna be maybe in the in the in the third part because it's gonna be more forward all this. Okay. So when I see my daughter she was been coming in the in the social worker and she was being doing this to my daughter and I was watching her and I was starting hearing that she was directing to my daughter, telling her to go with me in front of me and to put pointing on me and say splash splash. Really? And I say to my daughter, I want to be find the video so that way they can hear it, all, the, all that type of things, okay? And there's many more things that I want to be still posting over here so that way they can see in it how they was still mistreating all the kids and how they're still doing this to our kids in different places, how they're still treating them like a criminals and abusing us like we have no rights and all these type of things is have to be ended like the police is have to be start ended all this abuse and killing people for no reason they're supposed to be happening they're still having over here this security for protecting us and for any issues like i do have it right now it's how to be still protecting us and helping us to submit a complaint for all the people that still been doing us not for still harassing us and attacking us like they was been doing to me and to my daughter or to my son okay so when I say to my daughter, when my daughter, she was approaching me and to me, and she was telling me, mommy, look, I said, flash, flash, flash. And I said, my daddy, don't play with that, with that, this type of toys. Said, that is no good for you. And the principal say, oh, don't use that toy. They say, I was taken from another kid. I said, well, this is you was planning. So I was, I was noted that you was doing something like that. And she was starting, uh, she was starting, uh, they were planning all this. And when I was get up and I said, and I was turning my face and I saw as soon as, Soon as I saw the, the principal, she was whispering to the social worker, saying, oh, this plan is had to be works. What was the planning? Accusing me, saying that I was been doing something horrible to my daughter or to me, saying that I was bringing the toy for doing something horrible. Okay? So because I have a, uh, this... Uh, this this uh, recording... Uh, audio is hard to define who was the who was the person that was having this uh, toy gun in there because there was been a uh, using there was been using it for uh, for mistreating me and telling me a lot of things that is not appropriate for all that you know so uh, from the for having the evidence for from the from that time there was being this social worker that was being uh, using uh, this toy gun or what a toy gun for manipulating all the situation and still accusing my daughter and myself for saying those stupid things. They think I don't have evidence. Then I was starting seeing all this and I went to the uh, to the police station to, to submit a complaint about this, this school teachers that was being physically abusing my daughter. But the police, they was not even doing nothing. And the, and the principal and the, the school teachers that was telling me if I was reporting all this to the, to the police and I say, no, not yet, but I was did that, okay? But it doesn't matter for that. The police, they was not even doing nothing for helping me on that time. Then they was starting again doing the same thing, being corrupt towards everybody and still being abusing us too much. This is when they was starting again to provoke my daughter many times when I was submitting all these uh, this complaints. And I say, I want my daughter, another teacher or another class, because my daughter, she's not belonging in this class, for still being abusing her and still mistreating her and giving, her, and, uh, giving to my daughter a wrong class. So it was not even listening to me. I was keeping fighting for all this because they were like to still being mistreating us and telling me the mother she's an autistic when she is not an autistic. Okay? 
So there was a Serena game provoking my daughter and I was starting again getting angry. And I said, you know what, this is gonna be over and that's it. There was the principal that was suspending my daughter because it was continue provoking my daughter over there. And I was getting angry. And I said, you know what, you must have to be stopped with all these type of things. You still abusing my daughter. When I went to pick up my daughter to the school, and they was being suspended my daughter because I was not even, I was went to the school to pick my daughter and the, and the, and the principal, she gave me a letter and I was starting reading and then I said, they was suspending my daughter. For what reason you suspended my daughter? Because I was making a complaint because I see how you was mistreating us. Really? Many people are still watching my video later. They want to say, but you have no rights for still doing that. I have the legal right to defend my daughter, no matter what. Okay. And the principals and social workers and the teachers, they have no rights for still violating my daughter's rights. Okay. She's attending the school, but if she doesn't want to visit my daughter, she's attending the school. My daughter, she can have it, the legal rights to be a homeschooling her, okay? I was starting doing that because the issues from the, from the school, they have no rights for still being doing this to us. So they were suspending my daughter. I was very angry. I was asking what was the reason for still being doing that, and the, and the, and the principal just told me, because your daughter, she was doing a lot of things that is not appropriate. Really? One of the other teachers that was coming, my daughter, she was at the door, and the principal and the teachers, they was being so mad that she was uh, holding the door. And the mother, she was holding the door. Let me see if I can. My daughter, she was right here behind the door. And my daughter, she was uh, holding the door. And one of the teachers that was coming and was pulling the door out of my daughter's hand. And I said, what are you doing? What is the holding my daughter? And the, the teacher, she was trying to say, well, Katie, she left the door off, off away, you see. Get out from here. I said, that's why you still been doing all this in front of me. Show me who, who's the person still been with that bad attitude. So I was starting angry and I said, you know what? My daughter, she's not going to be, she's not going to be going back anymore to this school. My daughter, she's, you suspended my daughter for, for, for no reason. Because I come in over here for still trying to fix, to find out what's going on. And you didn't do nothing for helping me to have it, to, to solve all this situation in the good way. So now you suspended my daughter. So now my daughter, she's not going to go back to the school anymore. She was only reminded two months or less than two months for still being off the school. Okay. And this is when I was starting calling, they calling the CPS for still removing my daughter away from me. I want to do the other video the, in the third part because this is going to be more of forward. So please subscribe to my channel and give me some thumbs ups and share my videos. And if you have any comments, please be, uh, be careful when they're asking me something because it's a lot of things that it hurts me a lot and it still hurts me a lot because I have all the videos in here and I really, really, it hurts me a lot to still remember many things that is in the past and it still hurts me right now because I'm still with this situation for more than two years and it hurts me a lot to still be remind everything that was being doing this to us. But I'm so tired to be shut up and not to share my, my, uh, my, uh, my story. Maybe some other people that have more horrible things than me but at this situation, it's had to be stealth. It's had to be ended. And they had to be returning me my daughter. So wait for the for the for the third part and and we will see, okay?